everybody good morning this is Jean here and this is my bookcase quilt tutorial I'm I'm uh, working on my bookcase I've constructed my inside of my bookcase and I, I wanted to show you this is a little bit bigger I told you this is my book shape my bookcase quilt so far I have my five shelves and I've attached my lace my doilies, my hankies to my shelves. This is about 41 inches across so far. So this will actually be a, a longer, my dimensions will be a bit of a longer, um, a longer quilt than it is wide because I have to add the sides. So there's my, there's my hankies, my lace. Here's my hankies on my, near my bottom shelf that I put now i wanted to just address um isn't it pretty i think it's so pretty i'm i'm making mine a little bit bigger than my original one uh because i have quite a lot of images and i'd actually got a a book fabric and i wanted to address this you want to you want to um when you're putting your items on your shelves whatever they are whether they're candlesticks or books or chatch keys or keys or teddy bears, whatever, as in, uh, well, what I do, because I have so much stuff, I, I layer things, okay, and, and, and I think that makes a bookshelf interesting, when, when some people think of a bookshelf, they think of lining books up, blah, 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 eh, it's a bit boring, so what I do is I have a bookcase fabric, oh, it's over there, I have, I mean, I have a book fabric, I should say, so what I'll do is I'll, I really like this book fabric, so I will have some going vertically, but then like on a regular bookshelf, I would have it laying flat with a few little bits on top. That way I can fill my black shelves. Don't just be limited to like, oh, I'm putting stuff on my shelves, and then you have all this black void. So think about that. If you don't have black, um, I mean, if you don't have a book fabric, you, you can just use regular fabric strips to to to, um, to pretend it's a it's books. Do you understand what I'm saying? Varying heights, maybe an inch high. So just say, so just what I'm saying is you can build up on your shelves if you're going to have your shelves larger, like I am. I had said in my last tutorial, um, you can make your shelves eight inches, uh, and and then just have your shelves but I like to layer things on top make it a little bit more um, you know a mo bit more real because I have like so much stuff on my shelves in here that I layer stuff <laughs> if you're minimalist you probably don't want to do that you just want your shelves nice and neat and tidy right um, so anyway I have like I say I have bigger stuff I have I, I like my latest quote I had um I had a teddy bear on it I didn't I had one in the corner well I have a I have I found it oh it's all wrinkled I found a teddy bear but he's much bigger all right so but like that that will just sort of well I have to put the top on I'm, I'm jumping the gun but you can see my teddy bear here will sort of be on one shelf and then fitting on another going down to another one. Do you see what I'm saying? So I sort of needed, because I have some bigger images, um, I needed sort of the height. So, so I, that's why I made this quote bigger. Anyway, that's that. But I did want to address the fact that if you had been, um, you know, if you had gone to a, a, your favorite quilting site and seen um, some directional wood grain fabric like I had and are doing your shelves like I'm doing them, with the wood grain, I didn't get enough material. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, I got a couple yards, but then I realized I've made my shelves like I did, my, my five shelves, but then I have to make the side molding, the side bits in my bookcase, and then I have to do the top. So this is all I have left. My top will, um, what I'm saying is I'm going to have to piece my directional fabric to get my length of my side rails I'm going to have to because I want all my wood grain to go the same way if you have pale if you have brown fabric you don't have to worry about it you wouldn't have only had to have gotten a little bit I'm going to show I'm going to bring my camera over and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do 
how I'm going to piece my top fit because my my uh, my finished quilt is going to be a little bit wider than the width of my fabric. It's 41 inches now. I have enough fabric to cut my vertical side pieces pieced, but then I won't have enough to cut my my um top molding. I will have to piece that. I will show you what I mean when I come to that point. So I'm going to set my camera up. I'm going to cut my vertical pieces. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut them about, this is 41. I think I'll have enough fabric. I have enough fabric this way. I'll show you what I'm going to do in, de in depth. Um, I think I'll cut each piece because it's a little bit bigger. I think I'll cut for this size quilt my side rails. Let me see what that looks like. I think I'll cut them probably around four and a half inches. Maybe four inches. Maybe four inches. So I'm adding eight inches to this quilt. Maybe four and a half inches. I think I'll cut these four and a half inches. Um, so if you just have plain brown fabric, you just want a, sl you just want a, a length, the, so the, the length of your quilt on each side. That's our next step. We've constructed our body of our quilt. We're putting the side rails on. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to have to jiggery poker it and just piece some of my grain vertical fabric to get the two four and a half inch strips. And then I will address how I'm going to do my top molding. So I'm just going to go now and I'm going to sew on. I'm going to just sort of straighten up my sides. They're, they're fairly straight. Um, and stitch on my four and a half inch strips. So if you have just plain brown fabric, go to town. Do your side rails of your bookcase. Now, now you're going to be saying, but in your original bookcase, you had legs. I did have legs. I made my side rails about six inches longer. Um, I probably will do the same. It might be, it was a little bit difficult binding that. It, it, you know, when I go to quilt it, you have to bind that that square, but I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut this probably about five inches longer than my bottom side pieces. And then I'll address that when we come to it, when we do it. So I am going, my bookcase is going to have legs, just like on the original one. If you've been following along um, on my Etsy shop or my other videos to see the close-ups, I put legs on my bookcase. It makes a lot of sense, right? So I'm going to go cut my, my side rails down to my legs for my piece of furniture and then I'll show you how I cut my top rail. I'm going to be cutting my side rails of my uh, fabric right now and what I'm going to be doing is first of all I'm just going to cut off this large uh, selvage edge off of this fabric and I'm going to I'm going to just uh, oh this funny ruler that is funny um, yeah, I'm just going to do about four and a half inches, maybe, f I'm just trying to see if I have enough fabric. Yeah, I'll have tons of fabric. I'm just going to have to piece it, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. This piece is only, um, however long it is. So I'm going to do it about four and a half inches, whatever, I'm going to just do it to there. And, um, because it's a grain fabric, it's really easy. I can just, I can just sort of, I don't have to be precise. Or you guys want to be precise. But since it's the grain fabric, hopefully, hopefully I'm in the screen there. I don't know if I'm in the screen. I think I am. Am I in the screen? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm just going to cut it like that. So there's my one rail. Now, I want to actually line this up. And I believe it's on this side. I want to line this grain up. I, it's, you don't have to be so like, oh, yeah, look, it's right on the side. Yes, I figured that out before. And let me just see here. Is it, is that in there? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully this is in the screen. So I'll take this uh, selvage off of this one. I'm leaving a little bit of those um, holes because of the, the um, pattern, but that'll be in the seam. It'll be, it'll be fine. Let's take this off. Oh yeah, this guy I got from eQuilter.com, Ruben Design Studio 2016, style number R-U-N-A-T-2-A-L. That's this 
Oh, my phone. Isn't that so funny? Oh, I'm so popular when I start filming. Let me see. That's my, that's my husband. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to sort of line this up where, because I'm going to, you see how I'm making this into a long piece here. I'm going to, I'm going to put those together. I'm going to piece this together and make two long side pieces. This fabric is nice because the lines just show me where the guide is. <laughs> And I will be very careful. So here's my one side rail. I'll be very careful when I go to pin this together. Um, yeah, I will match up my, I'll match up the, the design. Oh, there's a little bit on that side. I'll match up the design so I get that nice vertical. If you, if you can see what I'm doing right there. I'm just matching up the design, making two long side rails. Now go back to my fabric. You might be saying, well, what are you going to do with your top? I know I have enough fabric left over to do my top rail, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So let me just see. Um... Let me just cut this. It may not be totally exact. I'll just cut it there. And this will be my other side rail. So I'll just continue. I'll just do this. I'll sew these together. And I'll sew them onto the side of my quilt. And I'll show you, I'll show you then what, how I'm going to construct my top railing. Okay, so now, all that messing about, I, I just wanted to show you, hopefully, you can see, I put on my side rails of my, of my bookcase quilt. Hopefully this is in the, in the frame. And it's, you, you can see it's becoming, it's really looking like a bookcase now with shelves, right? So there's, hopefully you can see my sides. And what I was messing about with before, I had to piece it. There's a, there's a seam right there. I had to piece it. If you're doing just the brown fabric, you don't have to mess about like I did. I just had to piece my grain fabric. Now, what I do have, though, I have these big, long pieces here. So now what I want to do is I want to cut my legs. Um, I don't know. My legs for my furniture... My, I just want to see if it's nice and square. My quilts are always pretty square. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't measure a heck of a lot, but my quilts always end up pretty, pretty good. I'll start at the top. Oh, I'm a little bit of a mess today. Um, I'll start at the top, and I'll put my sides together of my quilt. I made these about four and a half inches, the vertical side rails. Yeah. And there we go. It's a little bit, yeah, just a, it's a quarter inch. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. So now I'm going to put my two, yeah, there we go. It's a little bit out there. I'm going to put them together. And then I have these bits here. And I will just figure out, I don't know, what do I want? I'll just cut off, uh, I'll make, make my legs, oh, I'll just cut off here. I'll just cut off to there. It's a little bit long. <coughs> Pardon me. I'll cut off there and um, make it straight across. And then when it comes to binding, I'll show you what I do. So there you go. I have some legs on my, on my bookshelf, on my bookcase. They're a little bit long, but I'll, I'll sort them out when I go to quilt it. Now... There's our my bookcase. Look, isn't it? Isn't it lovely? Now, what I do have is I have this stuff. I have this fabric left over. Uh, this is all I have. I should have gotten really with this directional fabric. I don't know. Maybe not. That's all right. Yeah. I maybe I should have gotten a, three yards or something. So I could have cut those verticals first. But I would have ended up having to piece this piece anyway. So that's okay. So what I'm going to do? This is our top molding. What I'm going to do? is I'm going to just slice off a bit here. Um, I'm going to slice off, 
Let me just see. Um, excuse me. I don't know how long. Um, I'm going to err on the cautious side again. I'll just slice off oh, about 10 inches. Whatever that is. That looks good. Because I'm going to be making the molding. What I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to sew two pieces together so I get the width. Do you understand? I have to put on my top molding from my bookcase, from my end rail, my side rail to my side rail. So I have to make this, which is not wide enough, which is not wide enough. It's going the vertical. I have to cut two of these and stitch them together, sort of pattern match this, stitch them together so I can then cut my, my top molding. And I'll show you how I do this. I just need now, I'll just do that. Whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, it looks good enough. Um, cause I'm going to be cutting a nice curve in it anyway for my molding. So what is that? I don't know. Let me just, I just eyeball. I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I just had that left over. I don't know. Like measurements. This is my funky ruler. This is a weird ruler. I can't, I can't. Oh no, there it is. Look at that. It's exactly 11 inches. It's probably a bit too big, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. So now what I have, right? I have this piece, not wide enough. And I have this piece. So I'm just going to, yeah, that's good. I'm just going to sew this one down here, iron the whole thing, and then I'll, I'll fold it and I'll um, fold it in half because I'll show you what I'm going to do um, to make my top railing. I'm just going to sew these together. So I have a nice top, railing type top molding that the, my vertical is going the same way again if you have brown stuff you just have to have a strip the width of your quilt oops so i've taken my top railing and i've sewn it together to make my whole molding piece and i've laid out my quilt and this is the width of my quilt here's the piece that i made Again, if you're using brown fabric, just you can just have a hunk of fabric. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out. And I'm just going to start from one end. The seam is here. Not necessarily going to be in the middle. No, you can make it in the middle. I'm going to just come. I'm just going to try to, yeah, within however long to, to match up those diagonals they are the verticals they're not really going to match just so just a half inch or so over i'm just going to cut it off and um i was i was thinking about this just going to cut that excess off and then i'll work with this piece here i'm very no i'm not apologizing um because any of you who've been following me know that um when i'm making an art quilt i'm i really wing it uh, I, this is an art quilt i'm just winging it and i i i Sometimes I mess, sometimes I slice off fabric. And I, if you're a quilter who needs patterns and specifics, it, 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 you got to not watch me. But like, um, if you, if you, uh, I'm trying to encourage people to do their own thing and to sort of step out of their comfort zone. This is supposed to be fun. This is just pretty. I'm giving you vague directions, very, very vague. As I said, you can make this small, you can make it bigger, you can make it however you want. If you wanted a different color for your background, maybe gray, or you had gray fabric, whatever your, whatever your brain tells you, this is how I'm going to do it. So now, what I want to do is, um, I want to find, um, I've have, I have my piece of here, so I'm going to take this off. Now, I'm going to put this, I'm going to take my piece, which is a, pretty much generally the size, and fold it directly in half. Now this is where you have to be a bit brave. <laughs> my seam's not exact. There, see my seam is not even exactly in the middle. But this is this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sharpie. Ah, where's my sharpie? I'll take a purple sharpie. Right, not matter. And I want to make a molding. Now, if you actually go to my let me see if that's in the, yeah. If you actually go to my, my picture, which I'm actually sort of following, I just sort of did that, you know, a messed about. This is the middle of my quilt, my quilt molding. So I'm going to make a, a, a marking. Let me see. I want it fairly high. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to make like a 
hope you can understand this. This is my molding. I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to go another one. Um, you can make your molding as ornate as you wish. And then I'm going to come down. And then I'm going to make a molding. I'm going to go up here. Hope you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to make a, a molding like here. And then I'm going to go um, just down. Now I'm going to cut that out and see what this looks like. It may, it may, it may be a mess. <laughs> I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it on the other side of the um, on the other side of the sharpie, so you don't see the sharpie. This, uh, again, like you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. It's like, oh, if it, if it messes up, you can just cut it out again. So there's that, and I'm cutting it in half, as you can see. Um, so it's, it's a mirror image if you, if, when I open it up, hopefully. So I have this nice bit of molding here. Cut out that Sharpie bit. It'll turn out. Or it won't. <laughs> and now, let me see if I have a molding. Yeah. Now, let me put that on top of my quilt and see what that looks like. That might have to be a bit... No, I like that. I like that. Let me just see. It's generally the same size. Ah, my look, my bookshelf quilt's coming to life. What do you think? You see? There you go. I'll have to find the middle of my quilt exactly. Well, I don't know if that's exactly the middle. And then um, find the middle of my quilt and put this molding right in the absolute dead center. Your eye will see that. Look, 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 look. Oh, I like that. I might make that a little broader. I might make that a little broader because it's a little like boobs. I don't know. Look, you got two boobs and four, four boobs. But I might make that a little bit broader and, and, and make these... Make this so it's it ma me meets over here. I, I like this very much, though. Now, do you get what I'm saying? Do you do you understand this? Now, what I why I cut the, the top shelf bigger is look, this bit here, which I like, has to go up to the like I'm going to go up to the top. So you need like this is coming down here. You lose a bit of your shelf here, but you're going to need your top shelf bigger. Do you see that? To get this point up here. If you can see that right here. Because these bits come down. I like that. I think it looks like a nice bit of wooden molding. I might have something sort of in front of that molding. Like it would be, or maybe even tucked behind it. Because it, like this would be sitting proud if it was three-dimensional. But I like that. I might cut that just a little bit shallower. Um, but look, there is my quilt top. Now, I'm going to mess about with this. You can mess with however you want. I, that was quite a, um, uh, quite a, uh, in your face molding. You want to might, you might want to start with a, or a more gentle curve and then get a little bit braver. But I like this. I'm just going to, just going to cut it back just to make it slightly, not quite as like boobified. And, uh, but I like that. Now, the next thing I'll do when I get my molding exactly how I want it, what I will do is I will blanket stitch. I will come back and I will blanket stitch in black or satin stitch it if you want. I'm going to blanket stitch myself. Oh, I'm going to get my other machine out. I got to get my other machine out. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stop the video now since we've constructed our quote. But I'm going to blanket stitch my molding down to my top shelf. After I mess with it and after I'm pleased with it, this is what I'm going to do. So um, that's my top molding. That's my bookcase quilt. I'll, I'll pull this back. You can see 
you can see the oops, uh, oops, 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 oh, the messy floor. You can see the beginnings of my lovely quilt, but book shape, bookshelf quilt. Um, all my shells, my doilies, my top molding. That's how I do it. Um, again, you can, you know, you're only limited by your imagination, your fabric choices. Um, but this is how I'm doing it. This, this is a general idea. I'm going to put, I'm going to blanket stitch that on. And then we go to town. Um, I go to town. There's, there's a little cat on some books. Look, I mean, you know, filling up my shelves. It's going to be so much fun. This is the fun part. But for now, I've constructed my quilt. I'm going to blanket stitch this on. And I will see you folks the next time. So make, build your shelves and I will, we will be back. All right, thanks for following along. Bye. <laughs> I keep saying goodbye, but I just wanted to show you a few other, a few little bits that I that I did do on my quilt, um, or constructing my quilt top. You may have noticed um, that when I was when I was showing you how I was going to blanket stitch my top on, that I actually made a tuck on my wood grain fabric because this was slightly big I, to, to, to have it fit from rail, you know, side rail all the way over. So I just sort of made a tuck and top stitched along, oh, oh pardon me, along the, um, to like the grain. Now what I'm doing is I'm blanket stitching it and what I, what I will do is I'll just go, I'll just go back and I'll cut these little frayed bits off. But here I am blanket stitching. Hopefully, here's a, here's one more tuck. Um, now, as I'm blanket stitching, I'm thinking you might want to put a, a, a stabilizer under your stitches if you're more comfortable with that. This machine, without a walking foot, is and with my with my um, my bits pinned. I have a needle down position. Is is stitching this quite beautifully if you can see that this Husqvarna stitching a really beautiful blanket stitch that's why I like this this machine very much and it's not shifting it's not pushing that I do have to just go back and cut these little bits off but if by all means you want to you want to stick a piece of uh, fabric under your uh, or a, a bit of yeah a bit of fabric a bit of muslin or a bit of a uh, stabilizer under your stitches you know, pin it there, pin it there. By all means, you can to, to, to make that a little bit stiffer. I'm finding that just putting my molding on the top of my, on the top of my black shelf with pins, with a nice, fairly wide blanket stitch is working beautifully. Again, my needle is riding on the black and my stitches are going onto my top molding. You will see my stitches. I like that. I like that look a lot. I just keep shifting. I just keep shifting my fabric. Until I finish my molding. few tips I'm sure if you you folks you know who know how to sew I'm not showing you anything new but if I can you know, just have a few tips because you guys are always teaching me new things also and I and I think um it's a, a mutual admiration society going on here <laughs> so I will definitely now be signing off finally um, as I finish my molding on my bookshelf book. Oh, thanks. Bye.